Okay. So let's proceed to our lesson for today, the legislative branch. As you can see in our screen, in our PowerPoint, there are two logos. The first one is the Senate of the Philippines. And the second one is the House of Representatives. So the first logo is ang mga senador. Ang pangalawang logo naman ay ang logo ng mga congressmen. So introduction. According to the 1987 Constitution, legislative power shall be vested in the Congress of the Philippines, which shall consist of the Senate and a House of Representatives. So the two logos represent the legislative branch of the Philippine government, which is also known as the Congress of the Philippines. Ang tinatawag na Congress of the Philippines ay hinahati naman sa dalawa. The House of Representatives, which is the lower house, and the Senate of the Philippines, or the Senate, which is the upper house. So, inuulit ko. The legislative branch of the Philippine government ay hinahati sa dalawa. The upper house and the lower house. The upper house is the Senate. The lower house is the House of Representatives or yung mga congressmen. Okay? The Senate shall be composed of 24 senators who shall be elected at large by the qualified voters of the Philippines as may be provided by law. So ang Senate of the Philippines ay pinubuo ng 24 senators. And nagsasalitan sila ng um, nagsasalitan ang binubote natin. Kasi pa ulit ulit. <laughs> um, during an election, 12 ang in 12 senators ang ine-elect natin. And the next um, yung next na election, 12 na naman. Inahati natin. And these senators are responsible for different committees. Ma, tatakal natin yan mamaya. So, once again, the senators are voted. So, hindi sila appointed just like, unlike sa mga cabinet members. We've discussed before that the cabinet members were appointed by the president in accordance with the approval of the Commission of Appointment. Si Labriones appointed yung mga yun. Pero kapag sila Cynthia Villar, ayan, si Cynthia Villar, si, si Grace Po, we note natin yung mga senators. Okay? So, our Senate is in its 18th Congress na. So, tinatawag na ng natin na 18th Congress ang ating legislative ngayon. So, nagpapalit yan, magiging dati 17th yan, iba ang set of senators noong 17th Congress, iba nga yung 18th Congress, iba din yung magiging 19th Congress, depende sa magiging result ng election. As you can see, um, here, there are chairmanships sa different na different committees na pino will go to tackle that later on but this this photo or this article was taken from Philippine Star Senate committee heads for 18th congress so my senator na head ng accountability of public officer and investigation or so known as the blue ribbon committee my Please move this window away from shared application. Okay. My chairmanship ng accounts. My chairmanship ng, my chairman ng agrarian. My chairman ng agriculture and many more. Nakikita nyo ba yung please move this window away from shared application? Papa chair. Ano yan? <laughs> Ayan yun na yan. Next, the House of Representatives shall be composed of not more than 250 
unless otherwise fixed by law, 20% of whom would be party list representative. So, so the upper house was the Senate, yung mga senators, and the lower house is the House of Representatives, yung mga congressmen. So, the House of Representatives I composed of 250 unless um, fixed by law. 20% of the 250 are the party list representatives. If you've already experienced um, voting, um, ito yung pinakamadaming selection na pwede mong i-vote during election. And uh, mind you that the House of Representatives, yung mga binubota dito is by district also. So there are there is a representative in each district. And just like dito sa Santiago, si Tan. Si, si Tan. Yung babaeng Tan. Yun. Si Natan. Yeah. She's the um, rep, your representative sa district nyo. And she belongs to this House of Representative. Mga congressmen. If you're going to click the link, mapupunta ka sa site ng mga list of congressmen dito sa Pilipinas. But we're not going to click it anymore. Yan. So, sino ba ang qualified na maging senator? The qualifications to become a senator as stipulated in the Constitution are, so, these are the list of qualifications to become a senator. Para kung gusto mong tumakbo bilang senator, pwede naman. A natural born citizen of the Philippines? Um, are you pure blood Filipino or do you have a blood of a Filipino? Next, at least 35 years old. Sa senator to ha, sa senate. At least 35 years old, you can read and write a registered voter and a resident of the Philippines for not less than two years before election. So the qualification to, be, to become a senator is really basic. Diba? So unang una, dapat daw ay you are a natural born citizen. So by blood, you are a Filipino. 35 years old ka, then kaya mong magbasa at magsulat. Then you are a reg registered voter and a resident for two years. That's why the uh, a lot of people are trying to be part of the Senate of the Philippines. Because the qualification is really basic, diba? It doesn't say na you should should graduate a bachelor's degree. It doesn't include like that because um, lahat tayo ay may kakayahang maging isang senador. So, naniwala ang mga gumagawa ng batas noon na you don't discriminate yung mga taong gustong magsilbi dito sa ating bayan. Kaya, yan lang ang binigay nilang qualifications. Kapag kaya mo nang magbasa at magsulat, pwede na. At nag-register ka na and your age, ganyan. Meanwhile, the Constitution provides for the following criteria to, be, to become a member of the House of Representatives. So kung gusto man namang maging congressman or congresswoman, ito naman ang qualifications mo kung gusto mong tumakbo bilang isang congressman. A natural born citizen of the Philippines, at least 25 years old, is able to read and write and except the party list representative, a registered voter, and resident for at least one year in the district where he shall be elected. So just like the Senate, Senate of the Philippines, basic lang din ang qualifications na hinahanap if you want to run for congressman or House of Representatives. Diba? So, pwede ka sa natural born citizen, pwede kang half-half because you are also half Filipino. You still have the um, blood of a Filipino. Pero, ayan, at least 25 years old and basta kaya mong magbasa at magsulat at isa kang registered voter, pwede. Legislative process. Ang legislative process is 
Congress is responsible for making enabling laws to make sure the spirit of the Constitution is upheld in the country and at times amend or change the Constitution itself. In order to craft laws, the legislative body comes out with two main documents, bill and resolution. So it's a legislative process or dito sa mga sa upper house and the lower house nagaganap ang paggawa at pagpapasa ng mga batas. Paggawa at pagpapas ng mga batas, bills, resolutions, ganyan. Yan. Congress is responsible for making laws. Sabi. So this is the flow chart of legislative process. Paano ba ang paggawa ng isang batas? So first, yun, someone from the house needs to propose. May naisip ka bang um, ipasa o oh, kailangan bang kailangan mong mag-propose ng ordinance and resolution coming from any member. Oh, so, if I represent my district, I need to write a proposal. Then, kapag nakasulad na ko, what will you do? Next, the secretary. Um, yung secretary naman, ilalog nyo sa record. Then, first reading. Under the first reading, i-review yung title ng proposed bill mo. So, kapag... Um, Kapag on process pa lang, bill pa lang siya. Okay? Then, referred to committed concern. So, saan committee ba concern yung pinapasa mong, pinopropose mong bill? So, kapag sa agriculture, magpaproceed yung bill mo sa Committee of Agrarian Reform. Mga ganon. Then, next, makikita natin mamaya kung sino ang responsible sa iba't ibang committee. So kapag pinasa na sa committee ang um, iyong proposed bill, mahihiring siya. Maririnig. Oh, as you can see, hearing. Babasahin nila ang proposed bill mo. Titignan nila kung may mga lapses ba doon. Okay ba yung sinulat mong proposal? May bias ba siya sa ibang committee? Or nakakasira ba siya sa or naglalaps ba siya sa iba sa existing bill na may, or sa existing law or bill na approved na and next is the public hearing sa public hearing naman i-open yung proposed bill mo sa hindi lang sa committee involved kundi sa lahat next kapag na-approve na ng sana to yan then may committee meeting ulit then committee report. Yung dito sa mga hearing dito, i-compile nila yung mga papalitan, kung may papalitan or yung mga concerns nila. Then mag-mag-proceed yun sa committee report. Findings or recommendations to file or to calendar for second reading. So kapag nakalusot na siya dito sa meeting and hearing and may committee report na and na schedule na for second reading, Mag-proceed na siya sa Committee on Rules. Prioritize proposal to be included in the calendar business for second reading. So dahil may report ka na, i-schedule ka na nila for second reading. Ano ang ginagawa sa second reading? Period of debate, period of amendment, approval for second reading. Dito na, um, di ba, may mga pinalitan na nila. Kapag inilagay na yung mga bagong pinalitan, i-reread siya ulit kung magdijive ba or magtutugma ba lahat ng inedit noon and the content of your proposal. Next one. Kapag na-approve ang iyong proposed bill sa second reading, mag-proceed siya sa secretary. Print final copy of the final version and furnish copy thereof to all members. So, Kapag na-approve na sa second reading, ipiprint na dito sa secretary. And, syempre may mga amendments na tinatawag. Amendments meaning may inibahan. Okay? Kaya tinawag na period of 
debate, pinag-uusapan yan. Bakit ganito ang nilagay, bakit ganyan? Amendments, pinapalitan. So, they call the changes amendments. Then kapag na-fix na dyan, ipiprint ulit. Then kapag print na naman for another reading, mag-call na siya sa third and final reading. Approval on third reading. Next one, kapag na na discuss na, mag-proceed na siya for approval of the president. May approve, may approve yan or ma-veto. Veto meaning uh, ayaw ni president. Ganun. Or i-disregard niya yung na-propose na bill. Pwede yun. Even though, even though na-discuss siya properly, approve siya sa upper and lower house. Pero pag ayaw ng president, pwede yun. Hindi siya ma-approve. That's why the president is really uh, a powerful person in the government. Next one, what is a bill? Kanina ko sinasabi ang bill, di ba? A bill is the form used for most legislation, whether permanent or temporary, general or specific, public or private. A bill originating in the House of Representatives is designated by the letter H R because the House of Representatives followed by a number that is retained throughout all its parliamentary stage. So, makikita nyo mamaya ang examples ng mga House bill. Bills are presented to the President for action when approval in identical form by both the House of Representatives and the Senate. So, as you can see sa legislative process sa while ago, that the House of, Rep House of Representatives and the Senate uh, join together to discuss a certain proposed bill to be approved by the president. Dito. So kapag hindi pa siya na-approve, bill pa lang siya. Okay? Pag on process pa lang siyang dinidiscuss, trial and error, um, dinedebate, ina-amend, bill pa lang ang tawag doon. Okay? Solutions convey, uh, resolutions convey principles and sentiments of the Senate or the House of Representatives. So a resolution is an official decision that was made after a group or organization voted. So um, this is a different thing from a bill. A bill is um, bill into law. A resolution is like a solution to a certain problem or just a resolution, a sentiment. Next, an example of resolution is this one. The Senate Resolution SRN, Senate Resolution Number 1571. Senator Juan Ponce, Ponce Enrile Commendation. The, con, the title of this resolution is the resolution expressing the highest respect and profound gratitude of the Senate to each esteemed President Honorable Juan Ponce Enrile filed on June 4 by, by Zubiri Juan Miguel. So a resolution doesn't, um, doesn't really affect the law. It was just, uh, con it conveys the principle and sentiments. Parang special, something like that. Unlike bill, a bill is, um, a bill is a solution or parang a bill kasi is in forward of a law. Later on, magiging law siya. Ganun. Another resolution. Senate Resolution Number 1570. It was proposed by, um, it was commended by Senator Jingoy Estrada. The title was Resolution Commending the Honorable Jingoy Ejercito Estrada for his invaluable contribution as Senate President Pro Tempore. 
pro tempore during the third hindi ko na mabasa and this one is actually um, found sa website ng the legislative the congress of the Philippines Tinatawag naman na joint resolution kapag dalawa o higit pa ang nagsulat ng resolution na yun. Concurrent naman, used for matters affecting the operations of both chambers of Congress and must be approved in the same form by both houses, but are not transmitted to the President for his signature and therefore has no force and effect of the law. As you can see, uh, as I have discussed a while ago, a resolution doesn't affect a law, unlike bill. A bill, yung bill ay forward niya law, di ba? A resolution doesn't affect any law. So, a concurrent, concurrent, ang tinatawag na concurrent kapag na matatouch niya ang House of Representatives and the Senate of the, Pre of the Philippines, di ba? For example, as you can see, there are a lot of examples here. Yan, design nyo na lang. Then, a simple resolution. Deals with matters entirely within the prerogative of uh, one chamber of Congress and are not referred to the President for his signature and therefore has no force and effect of the law. So, a simple resolution, uh, just like the other resolutions, it doesn't affect any law, right? And it doesn't need the signature of the president. Depende na lang kung ito ay isang executive resolution. Iba naman yun. So, an example is, is an House of Representatives uh number um six seven five it states the quorum quorum is the uh, number of attendees sa isang meeting plus one um meaning if the population of the congress or if the population of the senate is 24 right 24 ang senate mas matatawag na quorum kapag kalahate ng 24 umaten plus one so, 13 ang quorum. Oh. Okay, let's proceed here. Bills are laws in the making. As I have said a while ago, bills are proposed to make a law. Kaya siya may legislative process. Mahaba ang uh, steps na uh, mahaba yung steps bago maging isang law ang isang law. Yan. They pass into law when they are approved by both houses and the President of the Philippines. A bill may be vetoed. So, let's, let's read again the second bullet. They pass into law when they are approved by both houses and the President of the Philippines. So, bago maging isang law, ang isang proposed bill, binabasa muna ito ng upper and lower house, the House of Representatives and the Senate para end with the approval of the President para bago maging isang law. A bill may be vetoed by the President but the House of Representatives may overturn a presidential veto, veto by gathering a two-third vote. So, um, kung vineto ng president or ayaw niya, ayaw niya yung uh, proposed bill, pwedeng i-overturn yun or pwedeng kontrahin yun na House of Representatives by voting um, into binovote nila na okay, two-third ng population ng um, House of Representatives. Yan. Kapag madaming nag-vote na uh, that is a good proposed bill, ma, hindi magagrant yung veto ng president. If the president does not act on a proposed law submitted by Congress, it will lapse into law 
after 30 days of receipt. Ito naman, kapag may nakalusot na proposed bill, then hindi binasa or hindi sinulatan ng approved ng presidente, within 30 days, hinayaan lang niya yun sa desk niya. Walang, nag, walang nagsabi na may proposed bill pala sa na sinusulong at hindi niya ito na veto kung ayaw niya man yun, niya pinansin. At natapos na ang 30 days, that proposed bill will be law. Ma, Mag-proceed siya as a law. Ma-approve siya as a law. Okay. Next. So far, do you have any question? So our lesson for today is really interesting. It's about law. Right? Ito lang kasi, hindi ko ma-move ito kung ano man ito. Please move this window away from the shared application. Ano po? Ayan. So let's proceed to the officers and committees of the Senate. So as I have said a while ago, there are a lot of chairmanships um, sa mga Senate natin, sa mga Senador. First of all, our Senate President or ang pinaka-presidente sa lahat ng mga Senador. So just like the uh, classes, right? Sa isang class ay may isang President. So ang President sa klase ng Senate ay si Senador Franklin Draylon. He is the Senate President. Before, the Senate President was Juan Ponce, Ponce and Rile. But because Juan Ponce and Rile is really old now, hindi na siya ang Senate President. And we're going to discuss bakit natatanggal ang isang Senate President as a Senate President. Under Section 3 of Rule of the Rules of Senate, the Senate President is the Chief Executive of the Senate. His duties and powers are as follows. So, siya, as I have read, as I have read, the Senate President is the highest senator sa Senate. Sa, sa mga Senate. Yan. The, one of the duties and powers of is the Senate President is to preside over the session of the Senate on the days and at the hours designated by it. It calls the Senate to order, and if there is a quorum, to order the readings of the journal of the preceding sessions, and after the Senate shall have acted upon it, to dispose the matters appear, appearing in the order of business in accordance with the rule. So as you can see, sa picture, siya ang nag, nag start ng mga readings. Siya ang magsasabi kung may quorum, but Quorum, pwede tayong may, kung pwede, ta, pwede silang mag, kung pwede silang mag, mag-proceed sa reading ng isang proposed bill, kung meron bang quorum, hanggang To decide all points of order, to sign all measures, memorials, joints, and concurrent resolutions, issue warrants, Order of Arrest, Subpina, and Subpina Duces de Code. So, sila ang nagsusulat kung okay ba yung mga resolutions, yung mga warrants. Yan. Then, next one. To see to it that all resolutions of the Senate are compiled with to have general control over the session hall and the antechamber, anti corridors, and offices of the Senate to maintain order in the session hall, the antechambers, corridors, and offices of the Senate, and whenever there is disorder, to make appropriate measures to quell it. To designate, to designate an acting sergeant at arm, if the sergeant at arm resign is placed, replaced by or becomes incapacitated. So, as you can as I have said a while ago, ang Senate president is like the president of a class. So, siya ang nagko-control the during sessions, siya ang nagkukat attention ng mga hindi nagbebehave ng mabuti, yung mga nag nag speech ng mga senators, kung may mga inappropriate words pa na nasasabi, mga ganon. Kaya meron siyang ganito. Yan. Kaya may ganyan siya. Okay? Next. 
Next, the Senate President Pro Tempore. That is our huh? Senate President Pro Tempore. He is Senator Ralph Rector. So, Senate President Pro Tempore is like the Vice President sa isang class. Kung ang Senate President ay ang President, ang Senate President Pro Tempore naman ay ang Vice President sa Senate. So, primarily, ang, ang duty ng isang pro tempore ay kapag nagkasakit yung Senate President, siya ang hahalili, absent yung Senate President, siya ang hahalili, mamamatay siya, mamamatay yung Senate President, siya ang hahalili. Hahalili meaning magpapalit. Or papalit. Ganun. Next one is the Majority floor leader. So as you can see, so far sa ating discussion, may mga positions ang mga positions ang mga senators. So the majority floor leader is Senator Alan Peter Cayetano. In the modern Senate, the second in command is the majority leader whose primary, primary responsibility is to manage the legislative affairs of the chamber. While nothing in the rules of the Senate expressly states the power of the majority leader, to a great extent, he is very influential in the passage of bill. As the traditional chairman of the Committee on Rules, the majority, the majority leader helps formulate, promote, negotiate, and defend the majority's legislative program particularly on the floor so the the majority floor leader speaks for his fellow men or for his fellow senate yan lang trabaho niya minority floor leader naman as i have said a while ago the former senate president a minority floor leader is actually an ex senate president he is a former Senate President. Parang siya yung um, taga-observe kung okay ba yung nangyayara sa Senate. The minority group chooses from among themselves the majority leader who is considered as the titular head of the minority in the Senate and often called as shadow president. So, minority floor leader often called as shadow president because they are former Senate president. Oh, so we have different chairmen or chairmen, chairmen sa different committees sa Senate. So the Committee on the Accountability of Public Officers and Investigations, also known as the Blue Ribbon Committee, I see Senator Chofish. So, kapag may mga investigations about malfeasance, misfeasance, nonfeasance in office by officers and employees of the government, its branch agencies, subdivisions, and instrumentalities, implementation of the provision of the constitution on nepotism, and investigation of any matters of public interest interest on its own initiative or brought attention by any members of the committee. So, this committee, the Blue Ribbon, silang mga nag investigate ng mga um, maling ginagawa ng mga nasa or silang tumitingin sa nag-investigate sa mga um, issues ng mga nasa position. Committee on Accounts. So, the committee on accounts is unfilled by wala, walang chairman. So, here, the committee na to, all matters relating to the accounting or to the auditing and adjustment of all accounts chargeable against the fund for the expense and activities of the Senate. So, walang chairman. Sa agrarian reform naman ay si Gregorio Conas in the second. All matters relating to agrarian reform, landed state, and implementation of the agrarian land reforms provision of the Constitution. 
Next is the Committee on Agriculture. So, kapag may mga issues, sila ang si St. Chavillar ang nagsasalita. Kaya, ayan. Sa jurisdiction, meaning kung ano ang sakop niya, jurisdiction. All matters relating to agriculture, food production, and agribusiness such as agricultural experimental stations, soil survey, soil survey and conservation, animal husbandry, fisheries, and aquatic resources. That's why when there are issues about um, agriculture, kung committee ka ng agriculture, you talk about it, about the issue concerning that, that one, or Sometimes there are hearings also. Nag-uusap ang cabinet, yung, se yung secretary, and the committee on, Agri on agriculture. Ganon, they are discussing the, the issues concerning their committee. Kapag finance naman, bank financial institutions and currency, si Sergio Osmeña. Si third. Kapag civil service, si Trillianis. Kapag climate change, si Recorda. Yan, dati yan. O, tignan nyo na lang. So as you can see, madami talaga ginagawa ang mga teachers. <laughs> ang mga senators. That's why they just don't approve proposals. They don't approve proposals lang sa proposed bills. They just don't talk about issues concerning different matters in our country. They head different committees. So, ayan. That is the legislative branch of our government. 